Hello everyone, my name is Holly and welcome back to your monthly dose of brand new book releases. June is coming up real fast, which means a bunch of brand new books are coming out to fill your shelves, your Kindle, maybe both, definitely both in my case. I have made a ginormous list of books I think are going to garner the most discussion, but of course I can't talk about every release, so leave me a comment for any of the ones that I miss. Now let's go ahead in this intro and talk about these exciting books. Now June 4th is a huge release day. Arguably most of the books are coming out on this day. The first being Hell for Hire. Rachel Aaron is coming out with a brand new urban fantasy that sounds super badass. I mean, just look at that cover. One of my favorite covers on this list, in fact. I've seen some ugly covers recently, but man, this is not one of them. I think it's so cool. This has one of my favorite tropes. It's following a ragtag group of characters who are all demons and their job is to protect this witch who is an outcast. It's supposed to be action-packed. It sounds like it could be on the funny, quirky side as well, or it could be heartbreaking. Who knows? I can't wait to start this one. This is one of the books on this list that I am going to be picking up in June. Lockjaw, a book I have actually read and I'll talk more about my thoughts in one of my next videos. For now, let me just tell you what it's about. It's a YA book that is being compared to Stranger Things, as you can kind of tell by the cover. A group of kids who discover that there is a monster living under their town that actually kills people. And of course, most of the town doesn't believe them. It's a very diverse story. It's traumatic, it's small town vibes. It reminded me a lot of It actually, so if that's something you're looking for, definitely give this one a try and add it to your wish list. Mirrored Heavens, it's finally here, the final book in the Between Earth and Sky trilogy. This fantasy world is inspired by pre-Columbian Mesoamerica. The first book followed multiple people as they draw together in a holy city where the coming eclipse heralds the beginning of a prophecy that predicts an unbalancing of the world. It's pretty epic. The series is very popular and I know many of you are just dying to see how this is wrapped up and I hope that it lives up to all of your expectations. In the Hour of Crows, this story promises Appalachian folklore in a southern gothic atmosphere. So it's part historical, set in the 1980s, and our main character is a death talker. And she has saved many lives with this ability that she has because she can literally talk the death out of the dying. Well, a mysterious murder happens and it's up to our death talker to uncover the truth behind her death. Part fantasy, part historical fiction. So either and gothic vibes, murder mystery, it has everything. We're still on June 4th, by the way. Tidal Creatures. So maybe I'm the oddball, but I actually don't like this cover. I saw this cover on NetGalley a while back and actually completely skipped over it until I realized it was Sean and McGuire. And I was like, really? This is kind of ugly. <laughs> Again, I'm probably the weird one, but she has always had such nice covers. What the heck happened? Anyways, maybe it matches the story in some way. This is the follow-up to the middle game and Seasonal Fears. It is set in a universe where someone is killing off moon gods and it's up to the remaining human incarnations of the lunar deities to find out who. I have not read the series, but I know it has a very cult following, so... Look out for it. The God and the Gumiho. Sophie Kim expertly combines fantasy and Korean mythology with a murder mystery twist in this new YA novel. We have a god banished from the heavens due to a failed coup, and his task is to kill 20,000 monsters before he is able to ascend once more. But of course, things get in the way, including the infamous Scarlet Fox, a very powerful Gumiho. This sounds really unique and different, and being able to experience both the mortal world and the immortal world, I think is going to add a really fun element. The Last Song of Penelope, the final book in Claire North's Songs of Penelope trilogy, a series of books where you get to experience everything from the perspective of the gods. There's a heavy focus on the women during a time of war and heroism. You can actually read these books as standalones if you're familiar enough with Greek mythology, which is really nice. But yeah, all three books are out now, so definitely add these to your TBR if you love reading about a different side of the Greek goddesses. Daughter of the Merciful Deep. This is by the same author who wrote The Monsters We Defy, which is a book that I read and I enjoyed, so I'm looking forward to this one. This is a historical fiction fantasy mix that takes the old history of Georgia and turns it into an underwater fantasy, it sounds like. But of course, it's not all sunshine and rainbows. 
shows it's a story about a community rising up to keep their town away from the hands of those who have no right to it racism and grief are very prevalent definitely a hard sounding read it sounds if historical fiction is your jam be on the lookout for this one guys we are finally moving on to a new date june 11th i have the fall of waterstone book two and this norse inspired epic fantasy series this picks up shortly after the end of a flame in the north a book i may have read this month we have an elemental witch and her bodyguard shield maiden and a party of warriors traveling and making this perilous journey and this continues that epic adventure though this is an epic fantasy the books actually aren't super long so it's a very digestible norse fantasy that almost gives like middle earth vibes especially the environment and the plot i'm really looking forward to the announcement of book three the fire within them another sequel book two in the soul fire saga book one being the darkness before them which i read and enjoyed i adore the covers to the series by the way so so much i think it's it's a fantastic and really interesting cover design so in the story we have this evil immortal king and magic that is fueled by souls and this mist that is engulfing the land ton of dramatic stuff and all of that was in book one i'm really curious on where the story is going to go um it is very slow paced and really takes its time to make sure the reader is settled into the world and i tend to enjoy those stories so be sure to look out for book two and maybe book three's cover reveal in the future moving along to june 18th we have of jade and dragons a brand new ya novel that is a mulan retelling with a sci-fi fantasy twist all set in a world that is inspired by qing dynasty history we have our protagonist ying who disguises herself as a man to join the exclusive men only engineers guild after her father who was a member has been murdered to discover who was behind it it's also a murder mystery and of course she has to complete this series of trials to be able to become a member it sounds really fun and i'm really intrigued how to make a horror movie and survive i have really enjoyed past books by this author so i'm really excited about this one it's a horror book obviously and it's kind of reminding me of nightmare on elm street just a little bit but without freddy krueger we follow a famous 80s slasher director set out to shoot the most terrifying horror movie ever made using a camera that might be demonic so we have this idea of a curse possessed item and i love that kind of stuff it says it's on the humorous side so probably a lot of funny moments involving this camera killing people. Wow, that sounded dark, but you know what I mean. The Witchstone, a standalone urban fantasy all about trying to break a curse. We have a demon main character who is tasked with increasing his mortal despair ratings in order to save his own skin. But in order to achieve this, he has to convince this family that the curse that turns them into monsters can be broken. This is another book that is supposed to be uh, hilarious, not taking itself too seriously. Quirky, which are always fun to throw in between all of these like dark and epic fantasy releases that we've been getting lately. So if you're in the mood for something eccentric in June, this could be it. Now let's talk about a spooky book releasing in June, and that is The Midnight Feast. Or I guess it's more of a thriller, but it's a whodunit mystery novel all about the manor, some very luxurious resort that is highly anticipated by many guests on its opening weekend. But during the party, there's a murder. And it turns out the manor has some secrets of its own and it's only a matter of time before everyone is connected. I had to throw this one on my list because I know there's many of you watching this who love your dark murder mysteries and this one might be up your alley. On June 25th, we have We Shall Be Monsters. Tara Sim, who has written many books, including City of Dusk and Scavenge the Stars, has written a new YA fantasy that is being promoted as Frankenstein meets Indian mythology. It's following two sisters, one alive and one dead and the goal is through science and magic to resurrect the other and bring her back to life. But she's being hunted by the king's army of witch hunters and a sickness spreads across the land. There's something about that plot that is pulling me in and I just might have to give it a try myself. Another book that I really want to read, Foul Days. The Witcher meets Naomi Novik in the first book to a new fantasy series, which by the way, all three books are releasing this year, which is just fantastic and honestly the reason why I'm going to read this one because I don't have to wait three years to find out the ending. We're following Kasara who lives in this walled city and unfortunately it's the foul days which is a period of time where monsters invade and you have to try to survive. Man I love that plot so so much. Also our main character has some type of shadow magic it sounds like. I cannot wait to try this one out. The Daughter's War. This is a prequel novel and is set years just before the Black Tongue Thief and is focusing on the Goblin Wars that is mentioned in that book. It's written in a very dark narrative 
narrative, definitely grimdark quality, and we follow a young woman who literally goes to war against goblins with her battle birds. I guess it's like reading a real account of her experiences on a battlefield, and we see it from the very beginning to the very end. It's reminding me a lot of The Heroes by Joe Abercrombie, and to be honest, I wouldn't hate it at all if it was at all similar to that. That's one of the best, like, war story books I have ever read, so if this is similar, I might have to read it. Another horror book releasing is Incidents Around the House. That's right, the author who wrote Bird Box is at it again with a creepy, disturbing read. This one, much more on the paranormal side. The story is told from the perspective of a little lonely girl named Bella who encounters an entity she calls Other Mommy that the family thinks is just an imaginary friend. That's scary as hell. And readers get to enjoy the gruesome drama unfold within this family and the house that they live in. Personally, I love stuff like this, so I I wouldn't be surprised if I picked this one up in June as well. It is on the shorter side, like short enough to read in one day. In fact, hopefully it leaves us with a good, satisfying ending. The Bound World, the third and final book in the sci-fi trilogy by Megan E. O'Keefe, which shocks me. I feel like book one was just announced yesterday. Man, the way time flies. This is a very high stakes space opera romance, I guess. There is a prominent romance, but nothing that's going to like make you go blah, at least for me personally. <laughs> Basically following characters who are stranded on a planet and that have to survive. Um, they help one another. I'm really excited to see how this series wraps up. And man, this cover is beautiful. I love landscape covers. Another sci-fi releasing is Echo of Worlds, the conclusion and the pandemonium duology. The first installment was Infinity Gate and it takes place directly after the ending, where humanity is at risk of extinction in a war with an AI civilization, and the Empire is desperately searching for a weapon that can help destroy them. Emma Carey has done a terrific job taking readers on a crazy, action-packed sci-fi adventure where every character is expendable. No one has plot armor. Sci-fi nerds, rejoice because this could be the series for you. So that is all I have time for today. You have made it to the end of this video. I am so proud of you. It looks like to celebrate, you just have to click that like button, man. <laughs> of course, there are so many more amazing releases in June, so let us know down in the comments what you are looking forward to. Are there any from my list that you can't wait to get your hands on? Again, like this video if you found it useful. It really helps me out, and subscribe if you haven't. I upload these every single month, so until we meet again, happy reading.